Well, hello there, and welcome to Top 10 Nerd. I'm Kat Jovi, and today we're going to be looking at The Dark Knight. Superheroes have to hold themselves to certain rules to make sure they themselves don't let the power of being a vigilante get to their heads. But sometimes these rules get broken. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Batman made his vow as early as Batman issue four in 1940. So let's get into it and look at the top 10 times Batman broke his own rule. At number 10, we have random henchmen. I know it's random, but it legitimately they are. So we'll just kind of warm up here with the henchmen in Detective Comic issue 572. In it, we have a few main characters, Batman, of course, the elongated man, Slam Bradley, and another great detective, Sherlock Holmes. This story happens over centuries and involves Sherlock's nemesis, Moriarty, and a plan to kill the Queen of England. In one of the battles, Moriarty's henchmen open fire on the Cape Crusader, who then then grabs a close henchman and uses him as a human shield as he moves along. Now you don't actually see him take his last breath or anything like that, but it's safe to say that he didn't end up making it since he kind of looks like Swiss cheese. At number nine, we have junkyard murders. Now, technically this is before he took his vow of not killing. Honestly, the early years of Batman are pretty messed up. Like he just, wow, he just killed a lot of people. But many of them happened at junkyards, oddly. It was like a really popular place for him to kill bad guys. In the 80s, in Batman issue 425, he's fighting a drug dealer who is looking to get revenge on Robin because Robin dropped his brother off a rooftop. Yes, Batman did give Robin a, you know, a talking to, killing people's wrong, even if he is a drug dealer. And the drug dealer has a gun and is running after Batman through a junkyard. And then Batman just like pushes a pile of cars into him, killing him, just crushes him under them. So, I mean, I don't know that you're setting the best example here. Also, in the early 90s, in the Detective Comics issue 613, he's looking into a turf war between two rivaling disposal companies. I know, it's weird. And a man tries to throw a chair at Batman at the junkyard, just a chair. Batman decides the best course of action is to kick him into another baddie, which then topples them into an already on garbage grinder. Flashbacks from Fargo, anyone? That's what I saw immediately when I read that. At number eight, we have the death of a count. This one is just so brutal that I really had to be in here. In the Detective Comics issue 37, we have a monocle wearing count who is stooped enough to throw a sword at Batman. Batman, of course, gets out of the way, misses him, and gets stuck in a wall behind him. Batman is not impressed by this move. He closes the door, walks over towards him, gets on the other side of him, and then at this point, the count is begging for his life trying, you know, he's not armed anymore. And then Batman hits him with such great force that the Count flies back and is impaled through the neck on the sword. This death is a lot more frightening than heroic to be sure, but again, it was at a time where technically he hadn't made his vow yet, so... You guys be the judge. Does it count? Does it not count? At number seven, we have the Joker in The Killing Joke. This one is at number seven because it's highly debated and no one really knows for certain. However, things are alluded to, so you guys can be the judge. At the end of the issue, Batman and Joker are sharing a laugh about a joke that the Joker just told when the police are arriving. The joke goes something like this. Two not so smart criminals are trying to get across a gap between two buildings. One of them suggests that they use a flashlight to make a bridge out of the beam of light, but the other says, what, are you crazy? You'll turn it off when I'm halfway across. And while listening to this, Batman sort of realizes that the two of them are never likely going to be able to put aside their grudge and he grabs his arch nemesis shoulders to hold himself up while he's laughing at this, the ridiculousness of all of it. And then in the final frame, the light goes out and the Joker's laughter stops, making readers believe that Batman actually snaps Joker's neck. What do you guys think happened? Feel free to put that in the comments below. At number six, we have he hung a mental patient from the Batplane. 
No, you didn't mishear me. Now, this is the first time that Batman was in a solo comic, so I think they really wanted to shock people. So the Cape Crusader is going after an evil scientist who has made a serum that when administered turns people into these really muscular, out of control monsters. This evil scientist starts using it on mental patients. One such patient is in a van with some other henchmen on his way somewhere to wreak havoc when it crashes into a tree and Batman jumps in at this chance. The patient gets out and is starting to run and then Batman hangs a noose around his neck from the bat plane, gets it around there and then just lifts off, hanging him to death. Very dark. At number five, we have KG Beast and friends. Now a lot of fans have a hate on for Zack Snyder's Batman. He's so violent he breaks his rules so much, like too much really. Like people get mad. So during the Dark Knight rescue attempt on Martha, Superman's mom, he stabs people, throws a henchman into a hallway with a live grenade, forces the henchmen to fire their guns at each other, uses one as a human shield, and smashes a guy's head open on a big crate. Now, Theoretically, some of these guys might have survived if they had had really good medical care, but there's no denying that KGB Beast was not so lucky. He was walking around with a flamethrower and a fuel tank strapped to his back when along comes Batman who shoots the tank with a machine gun, making it explode. Really not sticking to the vow here. At all. At number four, we have killing a group of crooks. Now, many fans hated the way this was depicted from Frank Miller because, again, it's just so aggressive and it just breaks the vow. Let's just get into it. You guys can be the judge. In this one, the Dark Knight jumps a group of bleach thieves. Yeah, you heard that right. Sometimes the things are just weird, guys. He beats the hell out of them and then he turns the bleach against them by mixing it with thermite, making a bomb, which he then tosses on them, igniting the group. While they're all burning to death, he beats the hell out of them as well. Then he notices Black Canary has, you know, stopped by and is looking on. She gets turned on by the scene and then they make out next to a pile of burning corpses. I don't know man, that's just getting a little kinky and weird for me. At number three, we have Darkseed's death. Now, we might have some technical people in the crowd here, so you be the judge, but in the first climax of Final Crisis, it gets real. Batman teams up with the Flash to get the better of Darkseed. Batman has a gun loaded with a god killing bullet given the dire circumstances and before he shoots it he tells him that he would be willing to break his one rule just this one time. So he shoots it off intending to kill him while at the same time Darkseed fires off an omega beam killing Batman. Now technically the shot gets Darkseid in the shoulder and he might have died but thankfully the other heroes are around and they step in to finish him off. But Batman was explicitly trying to kill him, so that's why it made the list. That's why it's here. At number two, we have when he killed every villain in Gotham. I know, big list, but it happens. This is why this deserves definitely number two, just the sheer numbers of it. In Dark Knight's Metal, we're looking at an alternate universe. In this one, there are seven different versions of Batman each one of which was combined with some of the powers of another Justice League member. They're also living on a doomed earth, so it's kind of a tough deal. In the series in Red Death, he merges with Flash while trying to save the earth. And with the extra power of Speed Force, he's able to zip around Gotham and then just slaughter every single evil villain residing there. But sadly, it doesn't end up helping him save the world. Womp womp. At number one, we have the Lord Deathman. Now, I debated putting this at number one or even adding it in because it's kind of like an unlimited amount of deaths for one individual. You'll understand what I'm saying. I'd have to say this is the most like diabolical, awful death and his vow was just broken again and again and again, essentially for eternity. Let me get into it to explain it to you. This time, Lord Deathman is the star supervillain who is immortal, technically. This time, the story is is based in Japan. Lord Deathman is working on a plan to kill every one of Japan's superheroes. Of course, his plans are stopped with the help of the Tokyo Batman known as Mr. Unknown. And to get rid of him for good, they lock him inside of a safe, inside of a satellite that is launched into space without any air. This means that for all eternity or until one day it crashes, Lord Deathman will suffocate to death, revive, and then suffocate to death and then die again and again and again. What 
torture. And there you have it, the top 10 times Batman broke his one rule. What do you think is the most brutal one? Do you have other ones that you feel could have made the list as well? Comment them down below, let us know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I'm Kat Jovi, this is Top 10 Nerd, thanks so much for watching.